In this video, we're going to walk through teaching a deep queue network to play Pong using the OpenAI gym environment. I'm going to assume that you have some familiarity already with deep learning, um, as well as core tools like a code editor, um, you know, TensorFlow, NumPy, etc. Uh, there are some excellent full courses on deep learning and reinforcement learning that I'll link to over on Udemy as well. Um, not mine, but uh, those are a wonderful place to get started. For this one, I just wanted to talk about a recent project that I did and uh, step through how you can replicate the results. The end result of this video series will look a lot like this. So our AI will be the green one on the right over here. And as you can see, it's quite capable of playing the game. Um, it is not playing it at a superhuman level by any means. The standard computer AI over here on the left is still um, you know, quite capable of scoring, and uh, we're even a little behind. But it does play the game passably, um, and this project was a, was a lot of fun to build, and I hope you'll enjoy walking through it with me. So to start with, I'm going to copy in some of our um, most common imports. So you may wish to pause the video for a moment and type these in yourself. Um, specifically, we're pulling in TensorFlow Keras Optimizers Atom. You'll notice I'm using the legacy version for this project. And then we're also pulling in um, from rl.agents DQN, DQN agent. And we're importing the linear anneal policy and EPS greedy queue policy, as well as sequential memory from RL agents, RL policy, and RL memory. And I'll go into a little bit more about what those do um, as we get into the video. So to start off, what we need to do is create our gym environment. So gym, if you haven't used it before, is a tool offered by OpenAI that allows you to um, plug in, you know, easily interact with a game environment um, using code. So we can use Jim and not have to worry about all the boilerplate of capturing the screen and pulling back, you know, information about um, the game or any of that. Um, it gives us a very simple standardized environment for interacting with code. Um, you know, interacting with a game via code. So we can kind of focus on the, the, the deep learning part of this. So I'm going to go ahead and start out by saying env equals gym.make. And we're specifically going to make Haley pong v 5 here. All right. And that, by the way, I'm a big fan of always running your code early and often. So we're gonna go ahead and run that. Okay, so we, we get a no module named TensorFlow. So in this case, I need to pick um, a Python version that on my machine that's going to have um, TensorFlow on it because I just started this project and it does not have any of that uh, configuration yet. project. There we go. And Python interpreter. And then I'm just going to pick what I have labeled my ML CUDA one environment. And that's going to have the libraries that I wanted it. Um, for your local environment, you will want to pip install TensorFlow. So again, this is where I would say run code early and often to make sure it works. So, uh, okay name Jim is not defined. So let's see, did I forget to import it? I probably did. All right, let's go ahead and import Jim. So we're gonna import Jim. And then for things I also forgot, let's go ahead and import NumPy as NP, because we'll be using that later. And let's run it again. All right, we have successfully built a Jim environment. And obviously that did absolutely nothing for us because um, there's no code interacting with it, but that's fine. We're there. So 
something that we're, we're going to be working with is the action space for um, Pong. So, you know, the, the ones that are obvious, you can move the paddle up, you can move the paddle down, um, you can also fire the ball, um, you know, fire the ball from the right, fire the ball from the left. Um, but all those, you know, the, the computer doesn't know what move paddle up means. So the way Jim exposes those things to you is through the action space. So what we can do here is we can actually, we're just going to print env.action space and see what that gives us. Okay, it says discrete six. So there are six different discrete action spaces um, or actions in our action space. And that's basically going to mean that we have, you know, numbers, um, I believe it's zero through five or one through six for actions we can take. And each action is going to be mapped to a specific, um, you know, a specific thing you could do. So these, by the way, anytime you're not sure about something, I always recommend going and reading the documentation. So I'm going to look up ALE Pong V5. And if we jump in here, you can actually see the documentation for this environment. And it gives you, yep, it's zero through five. So no action, fire, right, left, right fire, and left fire. Um, so what we're basically saying is that our code can take any of these actions. And those will be the potential outputs of our network. So, all right, so we've got ENV action space. So we are going to need that as a variable. So I'm going to go ahead and say nb actions equals env.action space dot n. And that dot n gives us the, oh, no, go back. That dot n gives us the number of actions. We're also going to need to define an image size and shape. Um, and that's going to end up being the input shape for our network. So in this scenario, um, you don't want to take the entire image because that's going to take a lot long. It's a lot more data and it's going to take a lot longer for the um, network to train on. So what we can do is there are a couple of tricks. We can scale the image down um, and resize it downward we can also make it grayscale. And we're gonna be walking through both of those things. So what I'm going to do here, I'm going to say image shape equals 84 by 84. There's nothing too magic about those numbers. Um, it's, you know, what's worked well for this environment. Uh, something to look at is, you know, if a human playing the game would need significantly more um, a significantly larger image to see how to play it, then you may want to think about not reducing it too much more for the AI. Uh, same, same, inf or same information for uh, turning things grayscale. Not every game can be turned grayscale. If a human could look at a grayscale game and still play it, which you really can in Pong, um, then it's probably okay for the AI to train on a grayscale image. I'm also going to set window length. Equal to 12. So your window length, you can think of when we're training our AI, it's going to be the number of steps that it's looking at to predict on um, as we're walking through training. So the window length is the last 12 images of Pong that it expects to, you know, see and train on. Um, in this, you know, you, for more complex games where there could be long strings of cause and effect, you might want a longer window length. In this scenario, 12 is plenty. Um, it's only going to take 12 steps in the game to get, you know, any normal uh, situation of, of where the ball is and where the other paddle is. So with this, we can now say that our input shape is window length 
And then we're also going to say image shape zero, image shape one. So that is now our input shape for the network that we're going to be putting together. So other things we want to have here, um, we want to have an image processor and that image processor is going to help us um, actually, you know, perform some of the, the operations that we need to um, on the network. So, or on the images before we feed them into the network. So back up here at the top, I'm going to say from, oh, went all caps there, from rl.core import processor from PIL import image and then we're going to start defining an image processor class now in a real project I would probably um, split these things out um, for this tutorial we're just going to code it all in line and just to make things easier to sort of walk through here so I'm going to say class image processor and it's going to inherit from processor that we just imported and we're going to code out a few things we're going to code out a process observation a process state batch and a process reward the one I really want you to focus on here is process observation so we're going to say process observation and it's going to take self and observation and this is where we're going to say um, we'll need to redefine the image shape. We can also pass this in. Um, 84, 84. We're going to say img equals image dot from array and observation. So what we're doing here, an observation is basically going to be of an array of numbers, or it's going to come through as an array of numbers passed through from um, OpenAI Gem. So we're later on in the code, we're going to call OpenAI Gem. It's going to give us an observation that, that gives us an array of numbers. Image processor is here to process that observation into an image, and then we're going to be able to do things like, you know, resizing it, converting it to grayscale, etc. So img image from array observation, img now equals img dot resize. And we're passing in the image shape, which is again our 8484. img equals img dot convert. So this is where we are actually converting that to uh, grayscale. And then img equals NP array, which is where we're actually, you know, converting that back to um, an array. And then finally, we will return img.asType uint8. All right, we need two other functions in here. They're going to be relatively simple. Process state batch. So what we're going to be doing here, um, it's very similar. Instead of, so the RGB values are going to come through between 1 and, or, yeah, 0 and 255. Um, we're just going to cut all of those down to numbers between 0 and 1, again, to make it easier for the network to learn. So we're going to say processed batch equals batch divided by 255. So that should effectively take any value between 0 and 255 and convert that down to a value between 0 and 1. And then we're just going to return processed batch. By the way, there's a lot of really good theory here um, that I'm really just glossing over because, you know, again, this is not a full AI course. Um, and I'm actually not an AI practitioner. I'm just posting this as an interesting project. 
um, I would highly recommend as you, if you're looking at this and, and a lot of what I'm doing isn't making a lot of sense, um, again, I will post some links to a good course uh, in the description to walk through a lot more of the theory behind what we're doing. So I'm also going to define a process reward function that's going to return mp.clip reward oh, negative 1.0 and 1.0 and that's just going to clip rewards at at most um, plus or minus 1.0 all right so from there we're going to start building out our model. So we've put together the image processor class. Now it's time to put together our uh, model function. Now you can do this a few different ways. I prefer to build these things as functions just so we can reuse them later on in our code. So we're going to define build the model. And again, all of this could be done much better. Um, you know, I would probably split this out into another file in a real project, but this is easier to step through. So we're going to take in input shape for now and in the actions. I'm going to set a default value of six. All right. So we're going to start by declaring model equals sequential. And that is the base um, you know, class that you're going to use for uh, TensorFlow you know, to declare a uh, neural network. And it looks like that is not something we've imported. So I'm going to come up here and say from tensorflow.keras.models import sequential and then also we'll need this later um, from tensorflow.keras.layers import dense activation flatten convolution 2d permute and Actually, I don't think we need dropout. All right. So it is giving me an error in my ID. We'll see if it resolves those in a moment. So back down here, where we've said model equals sequential. Um, so we've got to define a couple of different types of layers here. We're going to define several convolutional layers, which are there for image processing. And then we're going to flatten the network, and then we're going to add several dense layers to actually, you know, handle the uh, the decision making that are that are necessary to do the work. So we're going to start with our convolutional layers. So we've declared our model. Now what we need to do here is we're first going to uh, permute the input shape into the shape the model needs to take. So in this scenario, that's going to be model.add, permute, two, three, one, input shape, oh, that didn't do what I wanted it to do, input shape equals input shape, pretty boring around here, model.add, so this is our first convolutional layer. I'm going to say, Two by eight strides equals four comma four, and your strides are basically the the sections of the image, like how how it's going to break up the image as it um, scans it. So you know more slot, more a higher stride value, you're going to get. Um, speed but less specificity I think a lower stride value you're going to get more granularity I mean we're going to start high and then slowly lower that kernel I'm 
equals ah. H E normal. And then we're going to add a ReLU layer for activation. And that's a rectified linear unit. Here, we're going to add another conv convolutional layer. I'm going to do actually a couple of copy and paste. And these are basically there to help the model recognize visual structures. So we're going to change a couple of values here. We're going to make the second one a 64. And then we also have to lower the stride length. And then we're going to lower, again, another 64. And we're going to lower the stride length here to 2. Now the convolutional network is going, or convolutional layers in this network, um, are going to handle hand us a um, multi-dimensional array. We need to flatten that for the dense layers to be able to pick it up and do something with it. So I'm going to do a model .add flatten, and then we get into our dense layers. And dense is you know, usually what's going to be used for the actual decision making. So the, the best way to think of this is these layers are going to help recognize what's on the screen. And then the layers we're adding now are going to choose the action to take. So we're going to say model.add dense 512. So we're going to make that 512 neuron um, perceptrons or neurons wide. We're going to add another rectified linear unit activation. We're going to say model .add. We're going to add a second um, layer here. And multiple layers can allow a neural network to learn more complex relationships between different features. Um, yeah, this is more of a trial and error thing than anything else. I'm sure there's there's some science behind how to pick um, both network size and network depth. Uh, this is what's ended up working well for this problem. So we've got a 512 um, perceptron layer, a 1024, and then we're going to add another activation. And then finally, a dense layer that is our number of actions. So if these are picking up the image and this is making the decisions, this is effectively what's going to spit out the answer. So this is going to spit out a number between 0 and 5 that tells, the, um, tells us what which one of the actions in our, our you know, z zero through five range we want to play in the game. And then I'm going to add activation um, linear. So these were rectified linear unit. These are basically going to cut off anything um, under zero. The linear activation function is here to you know, help help pick a uh, a category between zero and five, and then with all of that done, we're going to finally return model. All right, and I think that is an excellent place to stop and pause the video and pick up on the next one. Thanks.